We know that the circumference of any circle is pi times its diameter, or 2 pi r. Let's prove this. Say you have a circle centered at the origin with radius r. The equation of this circle is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. I have a one-minute video deriving the arc length formula. It wasn't the most rigorous, and it annoyed some mathematicians in the comments, but hey, I'm an engineer, so it's good enough for me. Let's find dy by dx. We'll take x squared to the other side, and square root both sides with the plus or minus, of course. Now, let's find dy by dx. We'll bring the power down, which is 1 half, subtract the power by 1, and let's not forget the chain rule, we'll multiply by negative 2x. The 2 and 1 half cancel each other, and the negative sign can be brought to the front, perhaps making the plus or minus minus or plus, if you want to be too technical. And then we can bring the r squared minus x squared to the denominator with a square root, and this is dy by dx. Now we're going to have to square it, so the plus or minus doesn't matter anymore. We'll have x squared on the top, and the square root in the denominator will get cancelled. Now let's add 1 to both sides, make a common denominator, and then add the fractions. This simplifies into r squared over r squared minus x squared. And now let's take the square root of both sides. Let's distribute the square root for the numerator and denominator. The top becomes r, and the square root moves to the denominator, like this. This will be the integrand. So we'll integrate r over the square root of r squared minus x squared. But we still haven't figured out the bounds, a and b. Let's integrate from 0 to r and then multiply by 4. So we would be finding this arc length, one quarter of the circle, and then we would multiply by 4 to get the full thing, which is now c, the circumference of the circle. Let's solve this integral. One more time, we're going to use trigonometric substitution. This has been perhaps the most widely used integral technique on my channel. If we have a right triangle with hypotenuse r and side length x, then the other leg will be the square root of r squared minus x squared by the Pythagorean theorem. If we introduce this angle theta, then sine theta will be x over r, and cosine theta will be the square root over r. Okay, let's now solve for x. This will be r times sine theta. And to get dx, we'll now differentiate both sides. We'll get dx equals r cosine theta d theta. So we can now transform the integral from the x world to the theta world. We'll have 1 over cosine theta times r cosine theta d theta. The cosines cancel out. r is just a constant in the eyes of theta, so we can take it outside the integral. But now notice the bounds are in x, not theta. So here we have two options. We'll either transform the bounds to become in terms of theta, or we'll integrate, plug in theta in terms of x by resubstituting, and then plug in the x bounds. Make sense? For a change, I'm going to do the second option. The integral of d theta is just theta. And now let's plug in theta in terms of x. We know x is r sine theta, so theta must be the inverse sine of x over r. Agreed? So we'll place this instead of theta, and now we'll plug in the bounds. We'll get arc sine of r over r minus arc sine of 0 over r. This is arc sine of 1 minus arc sine of 0, which is pi over 2 minus 0, and this works out to be 2 pi r. So, there you have it.